Welcome. So, how many of you have been to an art gallery before? Some of you? Okay. So my name is Regan. Pleased to meet you guys. I am the curator with the City of Weyburn. So this is the James Weir People's Choice Awards. Uh, James Weir was the very first chair of the Weyburn Arts Council. This is the longest running People's Choice Awards in all of So what makes a piece of art successful? Anyone have any ideas of what could make a piece of art good? Trying your best. Trying your best is always important. Do it slowly. Do it taking your time. Use your imagination. Using your imagination. What we're going to use as a, as a way of judging whether or not a piece of art is successful is that if it makes you think or if it makes you feel. Art is about more than just making pretty pictures sometimes. Sometimes the art isn't necessarily pretty, but it's important and it has a message. Okay? Okay. So let's take a look at this one. So this one is called Breakthrough. Why do you think it might be called Breakthrough? Because there's like little cracks in it. Right? Because she seems to be like maybe she's pushing on a piece of glass or maybe a mirror. I've heard that people think that this right here is a pizza. Mm, yeah. I think it's a pizza. What is it? No. It's a shield. Oh, I saw that too. Oh, yeah. that that Shields were used in by warriors in, in when they would go off and they'd fight battles a long, long time ago. And they were used as a form of protection to protect the person who was fighting. And like the little red things are roses. They are, they're flowers. And sometimes when you're looking at a piece of art, what you're looking at means more than just flowers. Flowers often in art are used to represent emotions and feelings. That person's mad. No, she's 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 fighting a battle. She's pushing. She's trying to break through some limitations, and she's protecting herself and having emotions. Yes. Uh, what's the background? The background? Yeah. I don't know. It's an, it's an interesting color though. This color is a cool kind of bluish green or an aqua or a teal. Uh, it looks like a sky background. It does. And it contrasts, which means it's the opposite of these flowers. So this artist has used two very different colors that contrast each other. And that makes your eye, it fights for your eye's attention. So let's look at this one. Oh. This one is called Youthful Memories. And it is by the oldest artist in the show. She is 93 years old. Wow! I know. The fact that she's 93 is impressive. The fact that she's 93 and still creating art is extra impressive. Well, and also, I bet she's, I bet she practiced for life. I think she's probably been making art her whole entire life. Since she was younger than you guys, she's probably been making art. That looks like a picture. It is, it's a photograph. Um, how do you get the art to come here? Um, there's an application form, and when you turn 16, anyone who's older than 16 can enter the show. They just have to fill out the form and send it to me, and then they, they physically bring the art here. Yes? Um, that picture looks like it's like a head of a camera. It's like a head of a horse and the body. Oh, well, it's actually a baby horse right here. So there's a mama horse and a baby horse. Uh, if, that, if that's a mummy, it looks like a good mummy. Yeah, it is. This was taken probably a long, long time ago in the 1960s. Wow! Yeah, this photograph. And this is the artist's son. This is the mom horse, and that's her son. So everything in this photograph is no longer as it was, right? Because if this photo was taken in the 1960s, that's a long time ago. Uh, what country is that in? Well, what do you think? Um, do you think it's Africa? Hey, no. no, probably not. Hey, do you think it would be... I think it's probably Saskatchewan too. Why, why do you think that? Because there's a prairie. There's the prairie. It's very flat. And there's uh, this looks like stubble or pasture land, maybe? So let's look at this one. So this one's called Time to Ponder. Do you guys know what pondering is? No, no, no pondering, pondering is like the future. Thinking. Pondering is to think. Sometimes artists like to use fancy language. What can you tell me about this piece? Do you think that this truck is brand new? No. No? What can you tell me? 
I think it's old too. Do you think this car or this truck drove onto the farmer's land yesterday? No. No. What's telling you that? That's a fake. Cause it's like so good. It is the ground and the earth and the, the the grasses have grown up around the truck. What do you think that this person is thinking about? Mm -hmm. um, memories. Could be memories. Yeah. About uh, about driving. Could be about driving, yeah. About the future. About the future, very very likely. Oftentimes in art, and that's both movies and books and in, and in visual art, whenever there's a person that's kind of looking off into the distance, it's usually used to represent thoughts of the future. Let's take a look at this piece. Oh. Now these are all representational art, right? They all look like a thing. Whereas this is what we call abstract art. Art that doesn't have to look like any specific thing. Like this is not abstract because we can see that it's a truck and a field and a person. Whereas this is, is more abstract. We're going to look at both abstract and non-abstract art today. This one's abstract, although it is somewhat representational. This artist uses Google Maps. Have you guys ever been on Google? Yeah. Or on Google Maps? Yeah, this artist zooms in or, or zooms out of the Google map and paints the map. So what we're looking at, although it isn't obvious, are streams and rivers yeah, that's with it islands. It looks like it's winter though. Yeah, it does. Oh. Uh, this artist uses a, just a tiny bit of orange. Can you guys see the tiny yeah. bit of orange yeah. in there? Orange and blue are opposite on the color wheel. And that means that those two colors, when they're against, they fight for your attention. When there's one piece of art on three different canvases, that's called a triptych. Let's look at this one here. So this one is a robot kitty. Oh, that's my favorite artist. And this artist does a really good job of showing us what all artists do. So this artist takes very simple shapes and forms and combines them in different ways to make robots. What shapes can you see in here? Squares and triangles. Squares and triangles. Rectangles and circles. Mm -hmm. Yeah. This one? Well, how do you determine? You've got to count the sides, right? It's an octagon, yeah. Good job, guys. Oh, uh, semi-circles? Mm-hmm. So I think that tonight, when you go home, instead of watching TV or doing whatever you do, playing video games, I think that each and every one of you could go home and draw a robot. Oh. Because we know how, right? All you have to do is combine simple shapes to make a really cool robot. I would love to see you guys make robots. Oh, what if you make a rainbow you? robot? You could make a rainbow robot. Hmm? Did we bring them to you? Yeah, bring them to me. Bring them. If you drop them off at the library, they will make their way to me and I will hang them up in my office. I would love to see you guys make robots. Yay! Yay! I'm going to give these my grandma, which is my grandma at the library. Yep, sure could. Okay, so this one here. This is a type of art that is relatively new. It's called paint pouring. And this artist has a cup, had a cup, and she layered all sorts of different colors of paint and then put in an oil that worked as a repellent and then ju just basically dumped it on the canvas. Oh. So all of these little kind of circles and spots you see were created by the oil. Oh, the oil. Mm -hmm. So this is a piece of abstract art, right? It doesn't look like any particular thing, but what do you think it looks like? Like another ever found oil. Mm-hmm. Could be. Uh, like a, it looks like a river. It does look like a river. It looks, it looks like a map. Mm-hmm. To me, it looks like a tree monster. Yeah. You see, and there's a wonderful thing about art, especially abstract art, is there's no wrong answers. You know how in math class, if you take two and you add two more to it, the answer is always four. And if you answer five, you're wrong. But in art, there's no wrong answers. As long as it's what you honestly feel in your heart or think in your head, 
You're right. Let's look at this piece. Mm -hmm. mm, obviously, this one's a favorite. This is another piece of abstract art, but it's, it's representational. I think it's supposed to look like a thing. However, what I see, having lived in Saskatchewan most of my life, might be different than what somebody else sees if they didn't live in Saskatchewan all their life. It looks like a peach, like with the oh, like yeah. um, the orange and the brown. Mm -hmm. um, looks like the sand. Okay. That's the um, the, the yellow and like red and orange. Yeah. And that looks like lava kind of. Okay. And and the top it looks like an iceberg falling. Okay. In. Right? Isn't it interesting how everyone can see something different? Can I tell you what I see? Yeah. I think that what we're looking at is a landscape. Yeah, it's a landscape. I think that this is a lovely field of bright yellow canola. And over here we have maybe some summer follow or, or some wheat that got overripe. Yeah. And, and then we have here a sunset. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah. And then all these swooshes that go across it seem to me like maybe they're wind. Yeah. Right? I think maybe. Because we've got lots of wind here, don't we? Yeah. It's always windy and windy. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, it looks like um, the water looks like powering it up. It does look very powered, doesn't it? It looks very powerful. If I was driving my car and the sky looked like this, I think I would turn around and go home. Yeah. <laughs> It's interesting how we can all see something different, isn't it? Let's go take a look over at the, over here at this piece. Can I just tell you that I am loving your excitement? It is cool. So sometimes artists like to use things that other people would think is maybe just garbage. Garbage? Yeah. What is that on this? Well, this is this is a piece that was created out of the artist's imagination. Ooh. So this part here were the roots of a tree. Wow. Have you guys ever seen maybe in TV or maybe in real life when the wind blows a tree over and the whole thing comes up, even the roots? Yeah. Yeah. No. These were tree roots. And the artist took, cut them off and took them home. Yeah, the roots like of a tree. Yeah. And then it was, so like if you imagine it upside down, this part was all sticking in the ground. And he, he cut it off and he took it home. And then he carved it and painted it. And then this bottom part is all metal. Oh, wow. I've never seen it. Yeah, it's metal. So he, he welded it all together. It looks like it's kind of like a dragon. Kind of like a dragon, yeah. It looks like, it kind of looks like a monster. There you go. This yeah. artist likes to imagine what life on other planets looks like. And what if life on other planets didn't look like us? What if they didn't, what if they weren't bipedal? Which means, what if they didn't have two feet? What if, what if they weren't descended from apes? What if instead, Plant life was dominant. Oh. What if plants got smart? Oh. So what we have here is like a carnivorous plant. Have you guys ever seen a Venus flytrap? Yeah. They, they're like this, and then a fly flies in, and then it goes Whoa. Right? Oh. That's what these are. The flies fly in there, and then it closes up on them, and then it eats them. Oh. And down here, we have legs, so this thing would move. Like oh. this. Oh. Move. I like, oh, I right? Like isn't it interesting? What do you guys think space aliens would look like? So that's an idea for you guys to explore. Now we're not going to be able to look at every piece of art because we only have so much time. So I'm going to skip around sometimes, okay? Let's take a look at this one. <coughs> so this one is a sculpture and it's carved out of a special kind of stone. It's called soapstone. And soapstone isn't really found in Saskatchewan. You can't really go out into your schoolyard and pick up a rock and it's not going to be it's not going to be soapstone. Soapstone is unique in that it's extra heavy. It weighs a lot more than what you think it would, but it's also incredibly soft. It has the texture of a bar of soap. If I had 
fingernails, and if I went like this down the front of it, I could, I could wreck it. I could carve it with my fingers. It's so soft. So it's a soft rock. Ooh, difference, right? Soft. We don't think of rocks as being soft, but this one definitely is. Oh. Down here it says, be happy. Sweet. Do you guys see the humor in that? Yeah. Because he doesn't look very happy, does he? No. No, no but it says be happy. Maybe the lesson is that sometimes you can feel really happy, but it doesn't have to show on the outside. Oh. Right? Sometimes people have feelings and they don't. Right? I could be very happy, but I could still have a face like this. Oh. Right? Because sometimes emotions don't have to be on your face. Now let's take a look over here at this one. Right here, it says the title of these three pieces is Finding Fortitude. Does anyone know what the word fortitude means? Oh. It means strength. Oh. So this artist, these pieces are all about finding strength. Sometimes artists make art to help them heal. And sometimes art can help you heal because it helps you realize that you're not alone. So this artist was very sad and, and had to find a way to heal herself. These were created by making a wire structure and then she wrapped pieces all around them. Yes. They look like mummies. Thank you. They look exactly like mummies. And what are mummies wrapped up in? Toilet paper. No. In real life, no. Their toilet paper didn't exist in ancient Egypt. Oh. What were they wrapped in? Bandages. Bandages. Exactly. And why do we use bandages? Because they're my They're hurt, right? To help them heal. Exactly. Bandages are wrapped around things that are hurt. And all of these have what looks like bandages wrapped around them. So they're all ladies who are hurt but are healing, right? Finding strength to heal. So let's look at this piece here. So these are walking sticks that were carved out of a type of wood called diamond willow. Do you know why it would be called diamond willow? Because it feels like the shape. Exactly. You're the first one who's got it first try. Some people say, well, maybe the maybe the willow grew beside a diamond mine, or or maybe inside there's diamonds. But why it's called diamond willow is because if you peel off the bark, you find all these structures hidden inside that look like diamonds. Or people. And this artist has used those structures to make faces <coughs> on the walking sticks. So here, this guy here, he's got a really big nose, doesn't he? But that was where a branch was originally. There's right? two faces on them. There's faces all over them. Yeah. That's like hunting mm -hmm. Let's take a look at this one here. So this is done in clay. Have any of you gotten to play with clay before? Yeah. Come up to Single yeah. Hill maybe and made a monster? Yeah? yeah? Okay. Well, if you haven't, I'm sure you'll get a chance to. Clay is, of course, magic mud, right? It's dirt that you press together, and then it goes through the kiln. A kiln is a special word for a clay oven. The clay goes through the kiln, and it bakes in the oven, in the kiln, to a high temperature of 2,200 degrees Fahrenheit. No way. So, you guys know the hottest day in Saskatchewan in the summer? Yeah. That's about 100 degrees Fahrenheit. Yeah, we're doing liquids and solids right now. Yeah. Yeah. The people from my do you remember when they uh, melted the glass? Yeah. 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 Really, really hot. We said we wouldn't even have, like you say, that temperature in a day would be way hotter. That's what the kiln's like. It, yes. it was as hot as lava. It is. It is actually so hot inside the kiln that the pieces of clay in there, they glow bright orange like lava. And it transforms the clay from magic mud into stone. So this piece is another example of how sometimes artists use things that other people would consider garbage or, or not art material. This artist went for a walk in a pasture one day and he came across a dead hawk. And the hawk had been there for some time and the scavengers that also live in that area of our ecosystem had done their job and they cleaned all the bones off, but the feet were still there. Um, so the artist stepped on the body and yanked the feet 
it off and put them in his pocket. And if you look closely, when we come back to this piece, these legs that Georgie is standing on are the real legs of a hawk. They are? They are. Because sometimes artists use pieces that would not be used. We like to use different materials in our art. Okay. So right here, we have a picture of James Weir. He's the guy who started the first Arts Council, and we named this show after him. And here we have the trophy that if you win the show, you get your name put on this trophy. And when it's all filled up, we'll just add another layer and we'll just continue to get higher and higher and higher. It's kind of like the Stanley Cup, but for art. Okay, so this piece here. Now this piece is different from every other piece in the art show. Can you tell me how? We're using shapes, but putting like more shapes on it. Yes. It looks like a crystal. Mm-hmm. It doesn't look like crystals. What about the shape of the entire piece? It looks like an upside down duck. It does. And it's a different shape from every other piece. Most of the other pieces in the show are squares or rectangles, right? This artist didn't use a canvas. This used, this artist painted this picture on a piece of wood. Oh, and it's a wood. On a piece of wood. And it's a really good example of how artists can use tones and tints to make things appear like they push out or they fall in. Do you guys know what a tone and a tint is? Yeah. No? Yeah. Okay, so if we have orange and we add black to it, yeah. it becomes a tone. And if we have orange and we add white to it, it becomes a tint. So things that are lighter seem to pop out and things that are darker seem to fall back in. So here we have this piece, looks like it goes in and out all over the place, right? And then that is all accomplished by using tints and tones. So this piece here, this artist has a really good idea of giving, giving us both sides. How many of you have parents who work in the oil field? Some of you do, yeah? On the front of this piece, we have a piece of oil machine. And then all of these papers back here are called shares. And they represent money. What's this stuff dripping down? It looks like kind of a big mess of oil, doesn't it? Yeah. So this artist says, oil makes money, but oil also makes a mess. But he doesn't tell us what he thinks. He just lets that, us decide what we think. So it's up to you to decide what's important. Is it important that oil makes money? Or is it important that oil makes a mess? That's up to you guys to decide. Let's look at this piece here. So this piece is by the youngest artist in this show. This artist just turned 16. Oh, just turned 16. Yeah, this artist just turned 16. So she's the youngest. The oldest is 93. The youngest is 16. So that's a huge gap in years, isn't it? How many of you like to read comic books? Right? So this artist is really influenced by Japanese animation. It's called manga or anime. And you can tell that because there are certain things in the piece that are very much influenced by Japanese animation. The really large eyes and the small nose and the pouty lips are all very important figments of Japanese animation. Okay, so let's look at this one. How many of you have a quilt at home? Maybe on your bed or your parents' bed, maybe on the couch to snuggle with? This is very similar to a quilt. It's sewn much the same way. It's made entirely out of fabric, except it doesn't go on, it isn't used for cuddling and staying warm. It's used just for being a piece of art. What is it showing us? I think it's a squirrel. Yeah? A tree? Yeah, over here we kind of have a tree structure. There's a squirrel and, and there's a person tree. Yeah. How come there's a tree? It's like that there's like confetti mm -hmm. inside the squirrel. When you buy a piece of fabric along the bottom of the fabric, much like when you have a t-shirt, there's a tag in the back, right? Yeah. I yeah. Like when, you buy, when you buy fabric, there's a tag on the very bottom of it. It runs the entire length of it. And it tells you the maker, um, washing instructions, 
instructions, it tell, it, there's registration marks for printing, and she has cut that off, and instead of throwing them away like so many quilters do, she kept them, and she made them into a tree. But here we have a squirrel, and I think he's, he's at the bird feeder, and he's stealing all the food that the artist put out for the bird. She says the title here is Larval of Stavely Crescent, which implies that a squirrel is stealing all of the bird's food, and he's getting maybe a little, a little fat. And then meanwhile, the birds aren't coming to her yard anymore. Wait, I think it's, I think it's because uh, she, the squirrel is getting ready to hide. Maybe. Well, let's take a look at this one. So do any of you have any experience with roosters? <laughs> are, are roosters fun? Are they nice? Do they cuddle? No. no. I don't like roosters because they're mean. Are there ways in which this artist has shown you that maybe this rooster doesn't want to cuddle with you and watch Netflix? Yeah. Look at his beak, the way it's turned down. And look at his eye. His eyes are like, like this, like when your mom's mad at you. I don't think this rooster's very happy. But he's beautiful, isn't he? Look at all the beautiful colors and the drippy, yeah. drippy kind of bits coming off yeah. of his feathers. It looks like he's melting. Mm -hmm. It does kind of look like he's melting. Okay. Maybe he's sad because everyone keeps running away from him. Maybe. Maybe he is sad because everyone keeps running away from him. It looks like he's standing in the grass thing. Mm -hmm. The yellow looks like it's the sun. Yeah. It's beautifully done. I don't like roosters though. So this piece, this is a photograph, but it's a different photograph than the one we looked at earlier, isn't it? This artist insists that he is a photographer, but I think maybe he's something more. <coughs> because this whole photograph started with one photograph of this woman standing in front of a white sheet, and he made he took that photo. And then he took a photo of all these branches separately, and then he took a picture of all these leaves and he combined them using the computer. He put one photograph on top of another photograph on top of another photograph on top of another photograph. Oh, I see eight layers of photographs in this piece. So what he does is a little bit more than photography. Photography used to be that you took your camera and you clicked and that was it, right? And you got a picture of a cowboy and some horses. But you couldn't go out into Waver and take this photo, right? Yeah. Because there isn't a, a, there isn't a magnificent lady in a fancy dress standing behind like a peacock tail of, of branches and this lighting in this forest. It's many, many, many photographs edited together. Yes? It kind of looks like she's in a different dimension. Exactly. Yeah. He looks like he's growing the trees like... Mm -hmm. It looks like maybe she's like a powerful witch and she's like yeah. making the trees grow or something. This photographer likes to take pictures and create by combining them an imaginary land. And that's not what photography used to be. So it's new. It's a new thing that is, has been only around for a few years. What's the title say? Uh, the Trees Bird Auburn. Sometimes you can learn a lot from looking at the title of a piece. And sometimes artists choose to say, oh, I'm not going to title this piece, and they'll just say untitled. Let's look at this piece. This is an abstract piece of art, right? It doesn't look like anything real. Do you guys remember watching the, the movie Inside Out? Yeah. yeah. Where all of, the, all of the different emotions were represented by a different colored creature? Yeah. Yeah. So in the real world, sometimes, especially in art, colors represent emotions. So yellow is usually representative of happy things, excitement, right? Blue is very calm or maybe even sad, right? Red is very angry or, or love, full of love. Colors represent different things. How does this piece make you feel? It seems like we're important and we make us proud and yeah. make us excited. Mm -hmm. Excited and proud? Uh, it makes me feel like um, like all those emotions. Yeah, all the different emotions? Yeah. Does black mean like dark? Black is just, black is important because black always offers contrast. Oh. So black might not represent
present an emotion. Or it may. I, I don't know. Well, I, it, feels, it makes me feel rude in a good way. Yeah. I feel very happy when I look at this piece. It makes me want to dance, right? Because there's so much movement. Your eye goes all over the canvas, doesn't it? This piece makes me feel very happy. But one of the teachers that came with the group earlier this week told me it made her feel anxious. It made her feel nervous. The dark speaks to me. Right? So some people see the dark parts, and some people see this bright yellow part. And, and there's no wrong answer, right? Whatever you feel is 100% right. Let's take a look at this one. So what is it showing us? A picture of Weyburn. A picture of Weyburn. How do you know it's Weyburn? Because there's uh, the light. The water tower? The water tower that looks exactly the same. Yeah. That was your answer? Yeah. So the water tower is what we call a landmark. It's something that everyone from Weyburn knows. We all know that that means home, right? Even if you look at the signs that when you come in and out of Weyburn often, they show the water tower. It's something that we're known for. What do you think these horizontal lines represent? Maybe. Wind. I think maybe they represent wind. Because wind is also something that's always here in Weyburn, isn't it? Because we don't have like that. Like... This part? Yeah. yeah, we do. There's a place, of, there's a trail that goes all around Weyburn I mean, called I, I, the Tagua Trails. Yeah. I'm not a yeah. My kids learned how to ride their bikes on those. And they go all the way around Weyburn. You can walk all around Weyburn on these beautiful trails over the rivers and trees. Beautiful. You should check it out this summer. Okay. Let's take a look at this piece here. So this piece is done using pencil crayons. What? I know, it's so exciting. How many of you have, it, have used pencil crayons before? I do. Yeah, I think everyone has used pencil crayons, right? But we don't always think that pencil crayons are something that artists use. Maybe it's something that you only use when you're a kid. But this artist used to paint. She used to paint with acrylic paints. A couple years ago, she put her paints away and she decided that she was going to explore the world and the possibilities of pencil crayons. How many of you have gone fishing before? Right? So up here, we have all these people fishing. Yeah. And the world of water is all very calm and the day is bright and sunny and there's birds up ahead. And all of this is going on underneath. Yes, dear. Um, there's an octopus with there a is. hat. There is. Yeah. Like, if um, you, like these colors look like to me. It looks like rainbow. Yeah. I think the colors are supposed to represent the ocean current. Ooh. The ins good. and outs of the ocean. Yeah. Yeah. The current. All right now. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I can see there's like a danger sign. There is a danger sign, yeah. Uh, it kind of looks like a different dimension on the mm -hmm. water. It sure does. There are boats up there fishing. Yeah. Yeah, see, um, how, how, come there, how come there's a, how come there's a danger sign when, they, when it says danger and you don't, I don't know. Want well, it looks like there's a bunch of garbage sitting down here in the bottom of the of the water, which is pretty sad, right? So maybe that's why the danger sign is there. Yeah. It should go down to me. Um, oh. It's like that there's like a creature that nobody mm -hmm. ever discovered yeah. in that picture. But you know that they are still finding out things about the creatures that live at the bottom of the ocean? Mm -hmm. We know more yeah. about life on Mars than we do about life at the bottom of our ocean. Yeah, there's water on Mars. There is, yeah. Okay, so let's take a look at this one. It's down on the ground. Why do you think it's down on the ground? Yeah, it's a tiger painted on a rock. It looks like it's very heavy. That is why it's on the floor. Because it is very, very, very heavy. And if I picked it 
up and put it on one of those display pedestals back there, it would just, it would just fall. It would. It would break it. So it's just got to sit on the floor. So I put a sign go pointing down so we won't miss it. Okay, let's look at this one. This is another piece of fabric art, and it was done by a girl who's in grade 12. It is a piece of art that is abstract, but it's also a piece of art that is called color theory. Color theory paintings are all about showing how colors look different when they're with other colors. This stripe of orange right here on this white piece looks very different from this orange up here on the darker blue, right? Or this orange here on this stripe of light blue looks very different from the orange that's on the dark blue. What is grade 12? Grade 12, it's your last year of school before you go on to university. She's lucky. Well, I don't know. She's going to school. She's going to university in Regina next year. Aww. So once you're done school, there's a surprise. More school. Aww. Yeah. Here we go. <laughs> Let's look at this piece. Do you think this is showing us Waver? No. 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 It's showing us ancient ancient Egypt. Yes, it is showing us ancient Egypt. How can you tell it's ancient Egypt? A pharaoh? Close. And the lady looks like a <coughs> cheetah. <coughs> she does look like a cheetah, yeah? She, they got ancient Egypt hats on. They do, yeah. That's a little sun and a desert. Yeah, it is the sun and the desert. Because there's like those mountain things. The pyramids, and yes. And so, the ancient Egyptians had many gods. Not just one, they had many. Okay? This guy right here, no, he's, a, he's an Egyptian god. His name was Anubis, and he was often shown in his animal form, which was a jackal, which is a type of dog. Okay? And over here, we have an Egyptian goddess. Her name was Bast, and she was often shown as a jaguar. Okay, what? Yes. No way. So like a cat with spots, right? Mm -hmm. Down here you can see it's called Forbidden Love. Why do you think she called it Forbidden Love? Wait, Forbidden? Yeah, Forbidden Love. So does oh. that mean like... You're not allowed. Oh, um, it's because one is a cat and one is there a There we go, exactly! It's because the cats and dogs can't fall in love, yeah. right? But this artist has done a wonderful job. She's painted in watercolor paint. And she's drawn ancient Egyptian letters all the way around. Egyptians didn't write with the same al alphabet we do. They, they had a type of alphabet that was represented with figures and shapes. They used like pictures or symbols. Yes, they did. Good job. So over here, we have ballads. As I said earlier, this is a People's Choice Awards. Are you guys people? Yeah. Yeah, so you get, a, you get to choose. Uh, every piece of art in this show has a little number beside it. Yeah. And we're going to use those numbers to vote. So you get to pick your top three favorite. Okay? So number one goes here in this box. Number two in this box. Number three in this box. And remember, we're putting the numbers beside them. Okay? And then you got to sign it. And when you're done signing it and you've picked all your three, you fold it in half and it comes over here in the box. You can bring your parents down and, and help them figure out what their favorites are. Later? Yeah, today, all the way until February 15th. So get your family to come on down and vote. So on February 15th, which is the last day of voting, I will come down here and I will gather up all of the ballots and I'm going to add the names of the artists onto the pieces. And then on February 21st, we're gonna have an art reception which is a fancy new way of saying a party for artists. And we will announce the winners, the people who got the most votes. Thank you for coming and spending the day with me.